Hey guys, I'm uh, just here with one of the boats that we've got at the moment. Um, we're basically doing a bilge pump replacement. Uh, the bilge pump that is in here is broken. Um, as you can see, the boat's in a pretty state of disrepair at the moment. Um, yeah, it's uh, also almost needs a bit of a restoration, but uh, when we get the time to do it, we finally can. Anyway, for the moment, we need to make sure that it uh, doesn't sink. So. Uh, what I've done, the old pump that I've got, uh, as I said, that's finally died. And I've gone and purchased a Rule Flow Pro bilge pump. Looks like that. Um, the main reason I've got that one is it, it's meant to work in, I believe it's 3.3 uh, centimetres of water, which is 1.3 inches. Uh, it's actually got a couple of different modes. Uh, that's, that's if, if you put it to the... Uh, lower suction motor it'll, it'll sort of suck water out down to uh, 1.3 uh, the higher one i believe is two inches um, and then it's also got a mode here um, where you can cycle the pump on and off every couple of minutes or, or you, you'll uh sorry it will check for uh, it'll use the automatic sensors inbuilt into it uh, just to check for water every three minutes i believe um, if you're interested in getting that particular pump, I'd suggest, uh, suggest going and having a look at the manufacturer's instructions. Um, as I said, I'm not an expert with this, but uh, most of these videos to hopefully give someone an idea uh, what to do. So I'll open this up. So that's our bilge pump there. Now it comes with a number of different sized fittings. Uh, we're pretty certain looking at the old one that we've got that this is going to be the right one. So basically that will screw off and you can just screw another one on uh, and then you can connect it to your, to your outlet hose. So the other good feature of this, if I can get one of these out, is that they've got no return valves in them. Um, basically, that's just a small rubber valve. Water goes through it uh, when the, the pump's working and uh, when it stops, the slots in there will close up as water pressure pushes back against it. Um, can get that back in, might be able to demonstrate it. Um, but essentially, that's designed to stop the pump cycling uh, so if, if you've got a small boat, particularly if you're going to use these in one of a one of these, sorry, in maybe a, a dinghy or a tinny or something, um, there's not much water volume in there, and you can end up with the pump cycling on and off constantly, trying to pump that last bit of water out, um, and that can flatten it, the battery very quickly. All right, so got my wet shoes on here. Unfortunately, it's not the most enjoyable job to do. So the first thing I've got to do is take out the old pump. Um, so I've already gone and unscrewed the uh, hose clamp. I'll try and do this without getting too wet. So we are in the water at the moment. Actually. It's easier to, uh, to snap the old filter off. When I say snap it off, push the tabs in. Um, most pumps, Automatic pumps will look like this, and uh, they'll either have a uh, an inbuilt float switch, uh, which you can see in this one here. This one's definitely fried. This is a an old sea float pump, and that activates with the water uh, the water level and switch the pump on and off. But yeah, I don't know if you can hear that, but that one's uh, that one's not going to be working at all. So the old one that they're, they're replacing at the moment is actually, uh, it's got an electric, I uh, don't know the really correct word for it, but it's got an automatic sensor in it um, that will sense when water comes up. So that's got moving parts in it and this one doesn't for the, for the sensor. It can also uh, connect them individually. So you connect the pump and an independent float switch in series. 
But anyway, we'll go ahead and take this one off. Hopefully this isn't going to be too much of a pain to do. Alright, All right, so that's come off. Put that aside. And it looks like this is just held in with one screw, which is not, not ideal. The screwdriver that I've got here may not be good enough to take it off. I think we got it. Does help having a lot of tools with you, or some better quality tools. It's just uh, I've had to come out and do this in a bit of a rush. Just got other things we've got to do today. So, all right. So I'll put that old pump back together and keep the screw off it for now. You can see that's been sitting in there for a while. That can uh, be disposed of. What we'll do first though is just double check the size of the outlet barb that we need. It looks like it's going to be that one there. And I can't tell you off the top of my head what size that is. It looks about three quarters of an inch. But if you're not sure what size you need and you've already got a pump, that's the best thing, the easiest way to do it. Uh, otherwise, you've just got to measure your hose. Um, all right, so with this pump, we'll make sure that the uh, the rubber valve is installed in there before we put this in. By the way, this is the first time I've actually used one of these low pro pumps, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. something moving around in there but I'm pretty sure it's meant to. Uh, one other thing with this particular pump and I don't believe it applies to too many other ones this outlet um, outlet here where the barb goes on I don't know if you can see in the video it's actually got two little air holes you might be able to see that um, that's designed to help with priming because if, if the pump has an airlock in it, it doesn't get primed, then you're not going to get any water coming out. So it can run as much as it wants, but it's uh, the boat can still potentially sink. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, looks like we've got two mounting points, which you can see there. So we'll have to mount that on the floor and. Uh, as I was saying, it'd be much nicer if we could do this when the boat's not half full of water. But uh, unfortunately, it's the circumstances we've got. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the low position. And again, if you want to know more about how these this functions, you're probably best off looking up rural low pro bilge pumps. Um, but you can see there, if you've got one, that's an L for low and H for high. And you want to make sure L is facing up, and that essentially means that it's going to pump down to the lowest setting. All right. So let's just take this off. I'll talk more about the wires in a second. Alright, 
And one thing I will say, <clears throat> uh, if you're doing this for, while the boat's in the water like I am, uh, especially if it's if it's got a thin hole, you want to make sh a thin hole. Sorry, you want to make sure that your screws aren't too long, um, and they don't protrude through the hole, and you end up leaving more water into the boat. So that's uh, not a good situation. But this should be fine in this case. So what we'll do. Might install it this way. Ideally, this would be um, a lot cleaner to build, I mean, than what it is here. And when it does, when we do manage to get enough water out, we'll, uh, we'll have to go through and clean it because you know, even though it's got a strainer, it can block up pretty easily with all the stuff here. Okay. So what I'm doing here is just screwing it, the motor unit onto the floor. Alright, I thought I'd save you some of the hassle of having to watch the entire thing. So uh, what I've done is I've screwed that to the floor like I was doing. Uh, it's got two mounting points. Uh, I've just taken liberty of hooking up the outlet pipe. Um, again, that's pretty easy. It's just held in with a hose clamp. And I just wanted to talk about the wiring quickly before we finish. So as I said, this is just on the fly. Uh, this isn't ideally how you would wire something up like this. Um, but You've got three wires that come from the bilge pump. Black one is your negative, that goes to your negative terminal on the battery. Uh, that's your positive. Uh, that's, sorry, you've got a brown wire and you've also got a brown and white wire. The brown wire is uh, for the automatic. Um, I guess the automatic session of the pump to work. Uh, so if you just plug the brown wire in, uh, then it will um, essentially just run an automatic. And the brown and white wire, uh, which I don't have one at the moment, that's a manual override. Where you'd normally put that in is where you've got a switch, um, manual override switch, where you hit bilge pump and it will start up. Uh, ideally, or what I will go and do uh, once I finish this is I've got to put a fuse in uh, here on the positive side, which I believe is going to be, I think it's 7.5 amps for this model pump, but you've got to, uh, yeah, just double check for the one that you're putting in. So uh, that's essentially it. it. It's not too hard to do at all, um, even in this this kind of circumstance, which is not ideal. Um, because this is a flat bottom boat, that's why I uh, wanted to get the the low pro model. Uh, so it should hopefully uh, get as much water out as possible. Uh, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching. There you, go, you can hear it's uh, cut out there. Um, all right, well, thanks for watching, and uh, if you've got any questions, um, drop them below. But, um, yeah, that's essentially what you've got to do to install a bilge pump.